Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problem out of this book here, the T's official study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 2. We are on page number 93. We are going to pick up from where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we did the first 5 problems that you see on the top of the page and today we do the bottom 5 problems which, which they refer, which they are calling practice problem. Here's number 1. Problem number 1 is the only one we are going to do in this video because problem number 1 actually is a tricky one because it has 6 parts to it. A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. So here is the first one. A. We are being asked to convert decimal to percent. And the decimal that is given to us is 3.25. 3.25. Whenever we have to convert a decimal to a percent, for example, for example, let's look at something simple. Let's pretend that instead of 3.25, they had given us 0.25. First of all, had it been just 0.25, had it been just 0.25, we would have had a leading zero. A leading zero is always put here to draw attention to the fact that it is 0.25 to, to draw attention to the fact that it is 0.25 and not 25. Otherwise you might miss the decimal. To make sure that the reader does not miss the decimal we put a leading zero. So let's suppose this is what we were given and we are being asked to convert this decimal into a percentage. How would we do it? To convert a decimal to a percentage we just simply multiply it by 100. And we multiply by 100, the decimal gets up and moves two places to the right. And of course, 0.25, of course we know, is equal to one quarter, and obviously it is 25%. But here we don't have 0.25, we have 3.25. 3.25, but of course the concept does not change. 3.25 and multiplied by 100, it will become 325, that's all. 3.25 and expressed as a percentage, it becomes 325%. So that was one way of looking at 3.25. Here's another way. Another way to look at 3.25. 3.25. Of course, 3.25 is simply 3 plus 0.25. If you have a if you have a one of something, if you have a one whole pizza, if you have a one of something, a whole thing, one pizza, but that's a hundred percent of the pizza. If you tell me that you add, if you tell me that you add one pizza, or well you add hundred percent of it, that's all. One equals one hundred. Therefore, two equals two hundred, and three equals three hundred. So this three that we see here, of course, is three hundred percent, and we already know that this 0.25 is simply twenty-five percent, and hence giving us three hundred twenty-five percent. Let's do the next one, shall we? Part B. In part B we have again decimal to percentage and we are given 0 0.215. 0 0.215 we want to convert into decimal, we are going to multiply by 100 to convert it into decimal and when we multiply by 100 we pick, our we pick up our decimal and it moves two places, 1 and 2 is going to end up here and it becomes 21, 21.5%. 21.5%. Let's do the next one, part C. In part C, we are being asked to convert percentage to a decimal. And percentage that is given to us is 62.9%. To convert percentage to a decimal, well it's a percent, and we learned it yesterday, what does the word percent mean? Word per the word percent, the word percent literally means per 100, per 100 or out of 100 if you like. That's what percent means. So 62.9% literally means 62.9 out of 100. And now, 
just like in the earlier two examples when we're multiplying something by 100 when you're multiplying something by 100 you move the decimal to, to the right two space for example 5 times 100 a very silly example here just to, just to see it 5 times 100 well the 5 is not 5 5 actually is 5.0 and if you were to ask to multiply 5 times 100, 5 times 100 is 500. Why is it 500? Because you take your 5.0, you pick up the decimal and move it two places, 1 and 2. There you go. It becomes 500. The so same thing. So that's what happens when you multiply it. When you're multiplying, when you're multiplying a decimal by 100, you move, the, you move the decimal to the right two places. When you're dividing a number by 100, you do just the opposite. It moves to the left. The decimal place moves to the left. It's going to move two places because we have two zeros. So we look at this decimal. Let's write it here first one more time. So we have 62.9. We're going to pick it up and move it to the left two places. We're going to pick it up and it's going to move one, two. And it's going to end up here. And because it ends up here, to draw attention to, a, to, draw attention to the fact that we have a decimal here, we're going to put a leading zero. The leading zero is put there just for the convenience, just for the sake of convenience just to make sure that the reader does not end up reading this as 629 we want to draw their attention to the fact that it is not 629 it is 0.629 and, we, and the way we do that is by putting what is known as a leading zero leading zero it serves no purpose other than the fact that it draws our attention to the fact that there is a decimal there and it's called leading zero that's something we put in for the convenience so 62.9 divided by 100 becomes 0 0.629. Test to part D. Let's see what D has to say. D is the same thing. We're going to convert a our, our, our percentage to decimal. D. 145%. Again, the same exact situation, nothing changes. 145% means 145 divided by 100. 145, the way it is written, 145, the way it is written looks like this, but we have to understand that there is a decimal point here. Even though it's not shown here, there is a decimal here. The decimal is right here. 145 is same as 145.0, of course. We pick up our decimal, and since we're dividing it this time, and it has two zeros at the bottom, you're going to pick it up and move two places, one and two, and decimal is going to end up here, and it becomes 1.45. 145 divided by 145 divided by 100 equals 1.45. You understand? Let's do part E. Let's see what E has to say. So now we are converting decimal to fraction. We are being asked to convert decimal to fraction to fraction point two six five zero point two six five how do we convert this thing into a fraction these are more tricky than the other two instances that we dealt with just now to convert a decimal to a percentage is very straightforward you, you take your decimal uh, and you multiply it by 100 by moving the uh, decimal places to the right by two places to convert percentage to, to convert uh, percentage to decimal is quite straightforward. You take your percentage and you multiply it by, divide it by 100 and you move it to the left two places. Converting decimal to a fraction is a little bit tricky, a little bit trickier. Let's see what we can do. In order to represent this thing as a fraction, right now, is this a fraction? Yes, it is. It is a fraction because you can always put a 1 underneath it. If it makes it easier for you to understand, that's, that's what it is right now. So if this is a fraction, then why the bloody hell they're asking us to convert this thing into a fraction? It's already a fraction. Yes, by putting, by we putting the 1 in there at the bottom, it becomes a fraction. But it's not an acceptable fraction. A fraction is supposed to have a whole number at the top and the whole number at the bottom. Fractions cannot have decimals in the numerator or denominator. Fractions cannot have decimals on the top or the bottom. 
fractions, the correct definition of fractions is that they have to have whole numbers on the top and the bottom. This one does not. So how do we do it? Well, we need to move these decimal places. We need to move these decimal three places. One, two, three. That's what we need to do. And we can do that by multiplying top and bottom by a thousand. If we multiply top and bottom by a thousand, we have not changed the value of what is given to us because a thousand divided by a thousand is one. And when you multiply something by one, you have not changed its value. It's still what it is before. But it helps us here. Because now we can see that 0.265, when you multiply by 1000, it becomes 265. And at the bottom we have 1 times 1000, which is 1000, which is 1000, but I'm going to write this as 10 times 100. I'm not going to write this as 1000, and you will see in a second why. Now we can divide top and bottom by 5. I didn't want to divide 1000 by 5, it's much easier to divide 10 by 5. That's why I wrote down 1000 as 10 times 100. It makes it easier, not have to deal with a huge number. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 26 is made up of 1, 26 is made up of 5, 5. <coughs> 26 is made up of 5, 5. 5, 5 is a 25. After we take away 25 from 26, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 5s and becomes a 15. And 15 is, has 3 5s. Now, if you do not understand, if you did not follow me what the bloody hell I just said here, let's do it one more time. And this time we're going to do it out instead of just doing it verbally, we're going to do it out the long hand. We're dividing 265 by 5 and this is what we said just now. Here we go. We're going to do it one, more, one time here and then here. 26 has 5, 5. 5, 5 is a 25. 26 has 5, 5. 5, 5 is a 25. After we take away 25 from 26, we have a remainder of 1. And that one goes and joins the 5. That one goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 15. And 15 is made up of 3 fives. When we crossed out this 5, we were not crossing out 5, we were crossing out 15. Because with it, we had a 1 sitting next to it. It was not 5 by itself, it was 1 and a 5, just like here. So that 5, when it's crossed out, we put a 3 on top of it. We're not dividing 5. 5 by 5 divided by 5 would have been 1. Why is this a 3? Because it's not a 5, it's a 15. 20, 26 has five fives. After we take away 25 from after we take away 25 from 36, we have a remainder of one. That one goes and joins the five because the 15 and 15 is better of three. That is how I'm going to speak from now on when the division is done. And if you don't follow it, if you have trouble following it, you do the same thing. Follow the script. Follow what I say and do it the long hand yourself, and you will see that it makes sense. Just do it long hand and just follow what I say, and you'll you'll follow it. You'll understand it. Okay. Because if I start doing the long division every single time on the blackboard, it just takes an inordinate amount of time. Do you understand? So let's say that's 53. That's 53. Since we divided the top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, which is exactly why we separated the 10 and the 100. So now we are done. On the top we have 53. And on the bottom we have 2 times 100, which is 200. There we go. There we go. 0 0.265, 0 0.265 when represented as a fraction is 53 over 200. That was problem number E. Let's do F. I know you're here for the math part, but if you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and it never hurts to have a better vocabulary. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, we just use this word inordinate, and if you do not know what that means, type in, to search for this thing, GRE, you don't worry about what GRE is, GRE is one of the exams that I teach, GRE, vocabulary, day one. Type in GRE Vocabulary Day 1 and type in my name next to it, Kashwani. The video will pop right up. Watch those videos, a series of videos here. I think I believe there are a hundred of them. Watch as many as you can, or as few as you can, until you're bored to death. That is the goal here. Number F. One point three nine. We're being asked to convert again the decimal to a fraction. Well. Again, 1.39 over 1 is still 1.39, but you can have a fraction like that. 
we need to multiply top and we need to move this decimal two places one and two so we need to multiply top and bottom by 100 and when we do that we end up with 139 on the top and one times 100 is 100 and that's our answer that's our answer this thing cannot be reduced how do we know that this thing cannot be reduced here's the reason I'm going to very quickly explain to you make you understand why this thing cannot be reduced anymore if you look at 100 if you look at 100 and if you look at all the factors of 100 all the prime factors if you divide by 100 by 2 we get a 50 you divide that again by 2 we get 25 and you divide 25 by 5 we get a 5 in other words 100 is simply 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 that's 100 as you can see 100 has a factors of 2's and 5 that's all it is nothing else we cannot divide top and bottom by 2 because top is not the top number is not an even number if it's not an even number, how the bloody hell are we going to divide it by 2? And we can't divide the top by 5 either, because in order for it to be multiple of 5, any number for, for it to be multiple of 5, it has to either end in a 5, like a 35, or has to end in a 0, like 80. 80 is a multiple of 5 because it ends in a 0. 35 is a multiple of 5 because it ends in a 5. 139 is not a multiple of 5. Therefore, we cannot divide top and bottom by 5. We cannot divide top and bottom by 2. Therefore, it cannot be reduced, and that is our answer. And that was part F. I'll meet you again tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off, and we'll continue our journey, okay? Bye now.